America, a blessed and prosperous nation, a country where no matter your background, beliefs, or skin color, you have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Today, we expect such privileges and even take them for granted. But we must never forget that the gifts of freedom come at a price that only our most selfless dared to pay. From the Revolutionary War against tyranny to our modern-day war on terror, America has lost over one million soldiers on the battlefield. Patriots who defended a home they would never return to. While we owe these brave men and women everything today, let us also remember the sacrifices their families had to make. The widow with a folded flag instead of a husband. The children left with dog tags instead of a parent. The fathers, mothers, siblings, and friends bereaved at the loss of their loved one. This Memorial Day weekend, let us honor and cherish the brave men and women who gave their lives for our country. And let us pray for the loved ones they left behind. The great blessings God has bestowed upon America rests on the graves of those we could never repay. In the words of Ronald Reagan, their lives remind us that freedom is not bought cheaply. We send these Memorial Day thoughts your way, wishing you a sober and blessed day of remembrance. From Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I love the straightforwardness and the simplicity that, that he uses to teach. His teachings are very simple for everybody to understand. If it hadn't been for this ministry, I don't know where I would be. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm going to start a brand new series talking about Elijah. I've got a book, study guide, DVDs, and CDs where I'm teaching on lessons from Elijah. And I tell you, I'm really excited about this because this is one of the ways that God has really impacted my life. You know, you hear many people give a testimony about how that they went through terrible things and through these tragedies and stuff. They learned all of these things. And certainly, you can learn by your hard knocks, but there's really a better way to learn, and that's to learn at somebody else's expense. And did you know that this is exactly what the Scripture says over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and in verse 6, it says, Now all of these things, talking about the things that were recorded in the Old Testament, all of these things are examples to the intent that you should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, that the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all of these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So the scriptures here very clearly say that all of the things that were written down in the Old Testament were written so that we could learn by them. And you know, praise God for His protection over my life. I'm not critical of anybody who's had terrible things happen to them, but I just praise God that I've learned at the expense of other people. You know, when David sinned and committed adultery with Bathsheba and then murdered Uriah to cover it up, I tell you, I have studied those scriptures and it has impacted me and I have lived vicariously through David. I've saw the damage that adultery did to him, and not only to him, but to his family. One of his children died because of it. Actually, more than one. One child died at birth 
But then uh, Absalom killed Amnon, and then Absalom was banished, and then Absalom became bitter and eventually wound up uh, having a civil war where tens of thousands of people were killed. Adonijah rebelled against David. All of these things happened because of his sin. And I've learned through David that sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. And I do not want to live in sin. So my point is that ever since I was a young kid, man, I have been studying Scripture, and I have learned things through them. And Elijah is one of the examples in Scripture that God has just spoken to me through in a powerful, powerful way. And I'm really excited because I believe that if you would open up your heart and receive it, there are lessons to learn from the life of Elijah that would save you a lot of heartache, a lot of failure. It would also encourage you. Elijah, it says in the New Testament, was a man subject to like passions, like as we are. And yet God did these great things through him. Elijah failed big time. Now, I'm not going to get into that today, but as we go through this series, I'll show that Elijah probably rose to a height that very few people have ever obtained. He was the very first person recorded in Scripture who ever saw a person raised from the dead. Elijah saw great, great miracles, called fire down out of heaven, and yet Elijah failed God and literally failed to do two-thirds of the things that God spoke to him in an audible voice to do. Two-thirds of the things. He just chose not to do it. And as a result, people died. There were famines. There were people that even ate their own children. All of this gets laid at the feet of Elijah because he did not do what God called him to do. So he failed big time. He was wonderful. He saw great things happen. He failed big time. And yet, in 2 Kings chapter 2, Elijah walked with God to such a degree that he never experienced death. God just literally caught him up into heaven and Elijah never died. So it's a story of redemption about how that in spite of our failures, God can still use us. So there is a lot to learn from Elijah. And I just want to preface all of this by saying that you don't have to learn everything through hard knocks. You can learn by other people. You know, this is one of the reasons that we've started Karis Bible College is because, man, when I got started and turned on to the Lord, I didn't have a Bible school to go to. There were Bible schools around, but I didn't know about them. And, uh, you know, they certainly uh, weren't anybody that I was aware of. So anyway, my point is I just learned a lot of stuff through hard knocks. I've made a lot of mistakes. And when we started our Bible school, this is one of the things that I and all of the other instructors do is we share with people the things that we've learned sometimes through our own mistakes. And by sharing these things with people, they don't have to go through the same thing. We have figured out that just among our salaried uh, staff, the uh, instructors that we have in the school, this isn't including that we have like a hundred guest speakers come through on a, on a yearly basis. But just the salaried instructors in our Bible school, we have over a thousand years of cumulative experience walking with the Lord. And we share these things with you. And I tell you, we see people's lives changed and people avoid making many, many, many of the mistakes that we made. And it's just a great way to learn at other people's expense. Let me start on Elijah over here in 1 Kings chapter 17. And Elijah just comes on the scene. Let me back up. And before I even get into talking about Elijah, let me set the scene that he came into. And this is really significant because it relates directly to us today. You know, if all you do is look at the life of Elijah and just think about a guy who lived like 4,000 years ago, three to 4,000 years ago, and you just look at him and you don't learn lessons from it that you can apply to your life, then it's going to have very minimal impact on you. But I tell you, there are things that we can apply directly to our situation today. And one of those things, before we even get into talking about Elijah personally, is that it was a time of apostasy in the nation of Israel. If you go back in to 1 Kings chapter 16, it talks about Ahab 
and his wife Jezebel, and it says that they were the most ungodly kings that Israel had ever had, that nobody, there was nobody like Ahab who did sell himself to uh, just serve the devil. So Ahab and his wife Jezebel had outlawed the worship of the God of Israel, the one who brought the Israelis out of the land of Egypt and that they had been serving for hundreds of years. They literally turned on all of their history, on the God that started that nation, and they rebelled, and they were killing all of the prophets of Baal. And they, excuse me, all of the prophets of God, and Jezebel actually had 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the grove that she fed on a daily basis at her expense. So they had made Baal worship the uh, national religion, and they had outlawed the worship of the God of Israel. So this is the situation that Elijah came into, and you find in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, it says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth. I love this because, again, they had forsaken the Lord God of Israel. They had made Baal worship the state religion, and yet when Elijah came on the scene, he didn't uh, he didn't agree with their stance. He came in and says, As the Lord God of Israel liveth. He just attacked at the very foundation their rejection of God. And whether they believed it or not, God was still the God of Israel. Boy, this has direct implications to us today. Did you know if you were to stand up in a public square today and says, The Lord says, the Bible says, MOST PEOPLE TODAY WOULD CRITICIZE YOU BECAUSE THIS IS NOT POPULAR. THEY RIDICULE THE BIBLE AS BEING IRRELEVANT. THEY ACTUALLY CLASSIFIED CHURCH AS BEING NON-ESSENTIAL DURING ALL OF THIS COVID LOCKDOWN. OUR SOCIETY AS A WHOLE HAS RELEGATED CHRISTIANITY TO INSIDE THE FOUR WALLS OF A CHURCH. THEY DO NOT WANT IT BEING IN THE PUBLIC SQUARE. AND I TELL YOU, YOU WILL BE RIDICULED AND MADE FUN OF TODAY IF YOU COME UP AND START QUOTING THE WORD OF GOD AND SAYING WHAT GOD SAYS. THAT'S A VERY SIMILAR SITUATION. IN ELIJAH'S DAY, THEY WERE LITERALLY PUTTING THE PROPHETS TO DEATH. HE WAS PUTTING HIS LIFE ON THE LINE BY COMING AND GIVING THIS WORD. AND DID YOU KNOW THAT WE ARE SEEING IN OUR SOCIETY TODAY THAT THERE ARE PASTORS THAT ARE ACTUALLY BEING ARRESTED. THERE ARE PEOPLE THAT HAVE BEEN FINED, ESPECIALLY SOME OF MY FRIENDS, ROB MCCOY AND... and uh, THERE'S OTHERS IN CALIFORNIA THAT HAVE BEEN FINED. I MEAN, uh, HUNDREDS OF THOUSANDS, POSSIBLY MILLIONS OF DOLLARS FOR HOLDING SERVICES AND VIOLATING THE MANDATES OF THE GOVERNMENT. AND SO WE SEE A HOSTILE ENVIRONMENT TODAY, AND ELIJAH, RIGHT IN THE MIDDLE OF THIS, JUST COMES IN BOLDLY AND SAYS, THUS SAITH THE LORD GOD. I TELL YOU, THERE'S A LOT OF CHRISTIANS TODAY THAT BECAUSE THE SECULAR WORLD HAS REJECTED GOD AND THE BIBLE, THEY'RE APOLOGETIC ABOUT IT. AND I TELL YOU, THAT IS THE WRONG APPROACH. WE NEED TO STAND UP, AND IF ANYBODY NEEDS TO BE EMBARRASSED OR FEARFUL TODAY, IT OUGHT TO BE THE PEOPLE WHO ARE REJECTING THE WORD OF GOD. WE AS THE BELIEVERS, WE HAVE THE WORD OF GOD. WE NEED TO BE SPEAKING THE WORD OF GOD. AND YOU KNOW, THE BIBLE SAYS THAT IT'S A TWO-EDGED SWORD. AND IF I HAD A SWORD IN MY HAND, IT DIDN'T MATTER WHETHER YOU BELIEVED IT OR NOT. I COULD STILL KILL YOU WITH IT. I COULD STAB YOU. I COULD CAUSE DAMAGE. AND WHETHER PEOPLE BELIEVE THE WORD OF GOD, IT MAY NOT BENEFIT THEM PERFECTLY IF IT'S NOT MIXED WITH FAITH. THAT'S WHAT HEBREWS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 2 SAYS. THE WORD PREACHED UNTO THEM DID NOT PROFIT THEM, NOT BEING MIXED WITH FAITH IN THEM THAT HEARD IT. SO IF YOU AREN'T MIXING FAITH WITH IT, YOU MAY NOT BENEFIT it from, benefit FROM IT PERSONALLY, BUT THE WORD OF GOD IS STILL A SWORD, AND IT'LL STILL CUT TO THE HEART, AND WE NEED TO BE BOLD SPEAKING. SO SEE, BEFORE WE EVEN GET INTO TALKING ABOUT ELIJAH PERSONALLY, WE NEED TO RECOGNIZE THAT THE SITUATION IN HIS DAY AND TIME, IT WAS ACTUALLY WORSE THAN OUR SITUATION, BUT OUR SITUATION HAS ALSO BECOME HOSTILE TO CHRISTIANITY, AND IN THE SAME WAY THAT ELIJAH STOOD AND SPOKE THE WORD OF GOD, AND WITHIN A SHORT PERIOD OF TIME, HE LITERALLY WAS GIVING DIRECTIONS TO AHAB, THE KING, AND TELLING HIM WHAT TO DO, AND AHAB WAS OBEYING BECAUSE OF THE POWER THAT WAS IN GOD'S WORD. 
IT'S THE SAME THING TODAY. BROTHERS AND SISTERS, WE AS BELIEVERS, WE ARE THE LIGHT OF THE WORLD. WE'RE THE ONES THAT GOD HAS COMMITTED THE TRUTH TO. AND THE TRUTH IS A TWO-EDGED SWORD. IT'LL EITHER SET YOU FREE OR IT WILL ALSO COME AGAINST AND CUT PEOPLE TO THE HEART. BUT WE NEED TO BE SPEAKING GOD'S WORD. SO ONE OF THE LESSONS THAT I LEARNED FROM ELIJAH IS THAT IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT THE SITUATION IS IN THE NATION. IF PEOPLE WILL STAND UP AND SPEAK THE WORD OF GOD, GOD CAN TURN THAT AROUND. ELIJAH HAD ONE OF THE GREATEST REVIVALS EVER RECORDED IN SCRIPTURE. THE ENTIRE NATION FELL DOWN AND SAID, THE LORD, HE IS THE GOD. THE LORD, HE IS THE GOD. WE'LL BE GETTING TO THAT IN 1 KINGS CHAPTER 18. AND THEY CAUSED A GREAT REVIVAL, BUT IT WAS BECAUSE SOMEBODY TOOK THE WORD OF GOD AND STOOD UP AND SPOKE IT. AND IT'S THE SAME THING. EVEN THOUGH THAT AHAB AND JEZEBEL WERE THE WORST KINGS UP UNTIL THIS TIME IN THE HISTORY OF ISRAEL, AND THEY HAD TOTALLY REJECTED GOD. THE PEOPLE HADN'T TOTALLY REJECTED GOD, BUT THE LEADERSHIP HAD. YOU KNOW, IT'S VERY SIMILAR IN AMERICA TODAY. I BELIEVE THAT THERE'S STILL A LOT OF GODLY PEOPLE IN THE UNITED STATES. AND, OF COURSE, THIS PROGRAM IS SEEN ALL AROUND THE WORLD. IT'S THE SAME IN EVERY NATION. GOD HAS HIS REMNANT. THIS IS ANOTHER THING WE'RE GOING TO LEARN ABOUT ELIJAH, THAT WHEN HE DID FALL, HE FINALLY SAID, I'M THE ONLY ONE. AND GOD TOLD HIM, NOPE, THERE WAS STILL 7,000 THAT HAD NOT BOWED THEIR KNEE TO BAAL. AND he, HE HAD A WRONG PERSPECTIVE. HE THOUGHT HE WAS THE ONLY ONE SERVING GOD. LIKEWISE, THERE'S SOME PEOPLE TODAY THAT ALL THEY DO IS LISTEN TO THE 10 SPIES NETWORK AND ALL THEY DO IS HEAR ALL OF THE BAD STUFF THAT'S BEING PRESENTED. AND WE HAVE PEOPLE IN LEADERSHIP IN THE UNITED STATES AND IN OTHER COUNTRIES. MAN, I'VE HEARD THAT uh, IN uh, AUSTRALIA, WE ACTUALLY HAD ONE OF OUR GRADUATES FROM AUSTRALIA COME OVER HERE AND I WAS TALKING TO THEM. AND THEY SAID THAT IN ONE OF THE PROVINCES IN AUSTRALIA, IF YOU DON'T FOLLOW THE VACCINE MANDATES, THAT THEY CAN LITERALLY COME IN AND TAKE YOUR CHILDREN AWAY FROM YOU, THAT THEY HAVE INTERNMENT CAMPS WHERE THEY ARE PUTTING PEOPLE THAT HAVEN'T CONFORMED TO THE GOVERNMENT'S THINGS. OF COURSE, IN CANADA, THERE'S BEEN THINGS. AND SO THIS ISN'T LIMITED TO THE UNITED STATES. THE SPIRIT OF ANTICHRIST IS RISING UP ALL AROUND THE WORLD. AND YOU COULD LOOK AT THAT AND ALL WE DO, ALL THE NEWS REPORTS IS JUST THE BAD THINGS. THEY DON'T TELL YOU ABOUT THE THOUSANDS OF PLANES THAT LAND SAFELY. THEY'RE GOING TO TELL YOU ABOUT THE ONE THAT CRASHES. THEY AREN'T GOING TO TELL YOU ABOUT ALL of THE PEOPLE WHO ARE STILL SERVING GOD AND LOVING GOD. THEY'RE ONLY GOING TO TELL YOU ABOUT THE PEOPLE WHO ARE COMING AGAINST EVERYTHING THAT THE WORD OF GOD STANDS FOR. AND SO YOU MAY NOT HEAR THIS ON SECULAR MEDIA, BUT I AM TELLING YOU, I BELIEVE WE ARE IN THE THIRD GREAT AWAKENING. I BELIEVE THAT THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT ARE SEEKING GOD. DID YOU KNOW our, OUR MINISTRY, WE'RE ONLY A PORTION OF THE KINGDOM OF GOD AND WHAT GOD'S DOING, AND YET WE ARE SETTING RECORDS IN EVERY AREA. WE ARE HAVING MORE PEOPLE CONTACT US. WE'RE HAVING MORE PEOPLE COME TO OUR, our MEETINGS. WE'RE SENDING OUT MORE PRODUCT. I MEAN, THERE IS A SURGE. PEOPLE ARE SEEKING AFTER GOD. AND I BELIEVE IT WAS THAT WAY AT THIS TIME. WE KNOW THAT THERE WERE 7,000 PROPHETS THAT HADN'T BOWED THE KNEE uh, TO BAAL IN ELIJAH'S SITUATION, BUT THE LEADERSHIP HAD GONE BAD. THE LEADERSHIP WAS PUSHING THIS UNGODLINESS, AND THAT'S WHAT WE SEE HAPPENING TODAY. AND YOU KNOW WHAT TURNED IT AROUND? WAS ONE PERSON THAT HAD A WORD FROM GOD AND WAS BOLD ENOUGH TO GO TO THE KING AND SPEAK IT. AND I TELL YOU, I'M GOING TO BE MAKING A LOT OF COMPARISONS HERE, BUT THE VERY FIRST LESSON THAT I SEE, THAT I LEARN, IS THAT GOD, EVEN THOUGH THE LEADERSHIP HAD TURNED AGAINST GOD AND IT WAS KILLING THE PROPHETS OF GOD AND INSTITUTING BAAL WORSHIP AND GOVERNMENT SUPPORTING THE PRIEST OF BAAL, GOD HAD NOT... HE WAS NOT THROUGH WITH THE NATION OF ISRAEL. IT LASTED HUNDREDS OF YEARS AFTER THIS. THERE WAS A NUMBER OF TIMES THAT GOD INTERVENED AND THAT REVIVALS CAME. AND GOD WASN'T THROUGH WITH ISRAEL. I DON'T BELIEVE THAT GOD IS THROUGH WITH THE UNITED STATES. AND I BELIEVE THAT WE HAVE A LOT OF GODLY PEOPLE. AND I JUST WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU THAT IN THE SAME WAY THAT ELIJAH STOOD UP AND TOOK THE WORD OF GOD, AND BECAUSE OF THAT, HE WAS PROMOTED TO A POSITION OF INFLUENCE. YOU MAY NOT GO TO THE PRESIDENT, BUT YOU IN YOUR WORLD 
in your community, in your family, in your school district, in your work that you go to, if you will take the Word of God and stand up, you may be in a hostile environment, but if you will take a stand for the Word of God, I believe that the same things that worked for Elijah right here in 1 Kings chapter 17 will work for you. SO BEFORE WE EVEN GET INTO REALLY TALKING ABOUT WHAT ELIJAH DID, JUST LOOK AT THE SITUATION. LOOK HOW DESPERATE IT WAS. IT WAS WORSE THAN WHAT WE SEE IN OUR SOCIETIES TODAY. AND YET, ONE MAN WITH A WORD FROM GOD WHO WAS BOLD ENOUGH TO ACT ON IT AND SPEAK IT, TURNED THE ENTIRE SITUATION AROUND AND SAW A TREMENDOUS REVIVAL. WE'VE GOT THOUSANDS, POSSIBLY MILLIONS OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW WHO LOVE GOD AND ARE STILL SEEKING GOD. AND I TELL YOU, IF YOU WOULD TAKE THE TRUTHS OF THE WORD OF GOD AND IF YOU WOULD STAND UP IN YOUR WORLD, IN YOUR REALM OF INFLUENCE AND NOT BE APOLOGETIC, BUT BE STRONG AND SAY, THUS SAITH THE LORD GOD OF WHEREVER YOU ARE, THEN I BELIEVE THAT IT WOULD MAKE A DIFFERENCE. YOU KNOW, WE'VE HAD CONFLICT HERE ON A LOCAL LEVEL. MY MINISTRY IS A WORLDWIDE MINISTRY AND MY FOCUS IS LITERALLY AROUND THE WORLD AND MINISTERING TO PEOPLE ON EVERY CONTINENT. AND YET, we, WE DO HAVE A PRESENCE HERE IN OUR LOCAL AREA. AND WE'VE HAD THE LOCAL PEOPLE ACCUSE ME OF ALL KINDS OF THINGS THAT I HAVEN'T SAID AND uh, STUFF. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? THERE'S A TENDENCY TO BACK DOWN AND TO APOLOGIZE AND TO SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER TRY AND JUST, uh, YOU KNOW, DIFFUSE ALL OF THE SITUATION. BUT I TELL YOU, WE CAN'T BACK OFF OF THE WORD OF GOD. WE'VE GOT TO STAND UP. AND THE VERY FACT THAT THERE IS PUSHBACK AND THAT THERE IS CRITICISM, THAT'S NOT BAD. IT MEANS THAT YOU HAVE HIT A NERVE. YOU KNOW, IF YOU THROW A ROCK INTO A PACK OF DOGS, THE ONE THAT YELPS THE LOUDEST IS THE ONE THAT GOD HIT. AND LOTS OF TIMES WHEN YOU GET PERSECUTED AND WHEN PEOPLE COME OUT AGAINST YOU AND THEY BEGIN TO START SAYING THINGS, THAT'S AN INDICATION THAT YOU ARE MAKING A DIFFERENCE. JESUS DIDN'T ALWAYS HAVE A REVIVAL. NOT EVERYBODY RESPONDED WELL TO HIM. BUT NOT ONLY JESUS, ALL OF THE DISCIPLES, YOU CAN GO THROUGH THE BOOK OF ACTS, THEY EITHER HAD A REVIVAL OR A RIOT EVERYWHERE THEY WENT. GOD DOESN'T FORCE PEOPLE TO RESPOND TO HIM, BUT IF YOU ARE PRESENTING THE GOSPEL, IF YOU ARE PRESENTING THE WORD OF GOD IN TRUTH, PEOPLE WILL EITHER YIELD TO IT, THEY WILL BOW THE KNEE AND SUBMIT AND RECEIVE THAT WORD AND GET SET FREE, OR THEY WILL PUSH BACK AND FIGHT AGAINST IT. BUT THERE SHOULDN'T BE INDIFFERENCE. AND I'D SAY THAT THE VAST MAJORITY OF CHRISTIANS ARE WANTING JUST TO GET ALONG, AND THEY DON'T WANT TO ROCK THE BOAT, AND THEY DON'T WANT ANYTHING TO HAPPEN. I TELL YOU, IF YOU'RE LIVING A GODLY LIFE, THERE'S EITHER GOING TO BE A REVIVAL OR A RIOT. 2 TIMOTHY chapter 3, VERSE 12 SAYS, YEA, ALL THOSE WHO WILL LIVE GODLY IN CHRIST JESUS SHALL SUFFER PERSECUTION. THE ONLY CHRISTIANS WHO AREN'T SUFFERING PERSECUTION ARE CHRISTIANS WHO ARE NOT LIVING A GODLY LIFE. THEY AREN'T STANDING UP FOR THE TRUTH. THEY HEAR AND SEE ALL OF THIS STUFF, AND YET THEY WOULD NEVER SAY ANYTHING BECAUSE THEY DON'T WANT TO ROCK THE BOAT. THEY DON'T WANT ANY CRITICISM. THOSE ARE THE ONLY CHRISTIANS THAT AREN'T BEING PUSHED BACK AGAINST. BUT IF YOU TAKE A STAND FOR THE WORD OF GOD, WHEN PEOPLE CAN'T EVEN FIGURE OUT WHICH RESTROOM TO GO INTO, AND YOU JUST SIT THERE AND ACT LIKE IT'S OKAY, AND A WOMAN WOULD ALLOW A MAN TO COME INTO HER RESTROOM, MAN, YOU NEED TO STAND UP AND SAY THAT THIS IS RIGHT AND THIS IS WRONG. NOW, IT SAYS IN EPHESIANS CHAPTER uh, 4 AND VERSE 15 THAT WE'RE SUPPOSED TO SPEAK THE TRUTH IN LOVE. I'M NOT TALKING ABOUT BEING MEAN AND ANGRY and, AND CONDEMNING WITH IT, BUT YOU NEED TO SPEAK THE TRUTH. WE NEED TO STAND UP AGAINST UNGODLINESS. AND I PROMISE YOU, IF YOU DO IT, YOU ARE GOING TO HAVE A REVIVAL OR A RIOT. AND MOST PEOPLE, BECAUSE THEY'RE SO AFRAID OF THE REJECTION, THE RIOT, THE CRITICISM THAT MIGHT COME THEIR WAY, THEY JUST WON'T STAND UP. IF THAT HAD BEEN THE METHOD OF ELIJAH, IF HE HADN'T HAVE STOOD UP AND HAVE SPOKEN THE WORD, WE WOULD HAVE NEVER HEARD OF ELIJAH. WE WOULDN'T BE TALKING ABOUT HIM OVER 3,000 YEARS LATER. YOU KNOW, THE REASON WE'RE TALKING ABOUT HIM IS BECAUSE SOMEBODY HAD A WORD FROM GOD AND HE WAS BOLD ENOUGH TO ACT ON IT. I'D LIKE TO CHALLENGE YOU TODAY THAT YOU AND I HAVE A WORD FROM GOD. AND WE NEED TO bold, BE BOLD. WE NEED TO SPEAK OUT AGAINST THE THINGS THAT ARE HAPPENING TODAY AND CALL THAT WHICH IS GOOD, GOOD, 
and that which is evil, evil. You know, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 says that in the last days, people will call evil good and good evil and sweet bitter and bitter sweet and light dark and dark light. We are living in that time and we have to stand up and start speaking the truth. If we don't, I guarantee you, the ungodly aren't going to do it. SO THE VERY FIRST LESSON THAT I LEARNED FROM ELIJAH IS THAT WE NEED TO STAND UP AND MAKE A DIFFERENCE IN OUR SOCIETY TODAY. I'VE GOT THIS TEACHING ENTITLED LESSONS FROM ELIJAH. WE NOT ONLY HAVE THE BOOK, BUT WE HAVE A STUDY GUIDE. WE ALSO HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S. AND I THINK THAT WE'RE GOING TO MAKE A PACKAGE OFFER THAT I'VE GOT A TEACHING on FROM JOSEPH AND ALSO FROM DAVID. IF YOU'LL LISTEN, OUR ANNOUNCER WILL GIVE YOU ALL OF THIS INFORMATION. AND AGAIN, TODAY WAS JUST A REAL BRIEF INTRODUCTION. I'VE GOT A LOT OF REALLY, REALLY IMPORTANT THINGS TO SHARE. I PROMISE YOU THIS WOULD MAKE A DIFFERENCE IN YOUR LIFE. SO LISTEN AS THE ANNOUNCER GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY TO RECEIVE THESE PRODUCTS AND JOIN ME AGAIN TOMORROW AS WE CONTINUE THIS TEACHING ON ELIJAH. IF WE UNDERSTAND HOW MUCH GOD LOVES US, THEN HEALING BECOMES SO EASY TO RECEIVE. You got the same power on the inside of you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Your life is about to change. Welcome to a new normal. Learn from the successes and failures of others and explore the right and wrong ways to serve God when you get Andrew's teaching titled Lessons from Elijah. Andrew's complete series, Lessons from Elijah, is available in a newly updated CD or DVD album and as a book and study guide in either English or Spanish. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Or you can get these products as part of the lessons package, which includes two books, Lessons from Elijah and Lessons from David in three albums in your choice of either CD or DVD. Lessons from Elijah, Lessons from David, and Lessons from Joseph. These teachings will give you the chance to learn from the successes and mistakes of three very powerful but very human men of God. The Lessons Package has a catalog value of $135 that you can receive all these valuable resources today for just $95. Today, Andrew's book, Lessons from Elijah, is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this book to you free of charge. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111.